I am in Chattanooga, Tennessee, atop Lookout Mountain, and I am at a classic roadside attraction. This is Ruby Falls, an amazing underground waterfall and a cave. And we're gonna go in to said cave and see the falls. So uh, let's go check this place out. The entrance to the Ruby Falls cave is housed inside a big castle named the Cavern Castle. This castle, built in 1930, was designed after a 15th century Irish castle and was built from the extracted limestone that was removed to build the elevator shaft and the cave trail. It does provide quite a grand entrance into the attraction. The Lookout Mountain Caverns are so historic, they're even on the National Register of Historic Places. Inside the castle, they have a Zoltar machine. You never know where you'll find Zoltar. They have recently added onto the castle a little bit, and you can still climb up to the top of the tower and get an amazing view over Chattanooga, Tennessee. There's a clear view of the Moccasin Bend of the Tennessee River. That whole area is a National Archaeological District. And there's the city of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Like the amazing neighboring attraction Rock City, which opened around the same time, Ruby Falls has also extensively advertised across the South, following in the footsteps of the iconic Sea Rock City barns and billboards. And this has gained Ruby Falls almost equal notoriety and recognition. The castle is built just off Highway 41, approximately the route of the old Dixie Highway, and farther up the road you can reach the Incline Railway, Point Park, and Rock City. Now we're going to head down the elevator into Ruby Falls Cave. This is the location where the discoverer and entrepreneur of Ruby Falls, Leo Lambert, first entered the Ruby Falls Cave. Ruby Falls Cave, which is different from Lookout Mountain Cave, has no natural openings. Unlike Lookout Mountain Cave, which originally opened as a tourist attraction in the late 19th century, but closed in 1905 for a railroad tunnel's construction and never reopened. Lambert was a local cave enthusiast and wanted to open the caverns back up to tourists, so he formed a company to develop it and purchase the land. In 1928, the limestone drilling began, and they found a small, unexpected passageway. Lambert started crawling through this route inside what he discovered was a separate cave system, and eventually discovered the falls at the end of it. On the cave tour, you follow right along the discovery route of Leo Lambert into the Ruby Falls chamber, but the tour is a little more fast paced than when Lambert first tried to get through it. There's the first cave formation, the Elephant's Foot. They did continue to dig after finding this cave and finally reached the Lookout Mountain Caverns 1,120 feet below the castle. This is the spot Leo Lambert was first able to stand up after seven hours of crawling from where we first entered. In December of 1929, very unfortunate timing, they opened Lookout Mountain Caverns, and then they started Ruby Falls tours in June of the following year. In 1932, the company that was responsible for development went bankrupt, and by 1935, they permanently stopped Lookout Mountain Cavern tours because Ruby Falls was infinitely more popular. Ruby Falls was popular and was visited by a lot of people throughout the depression, and it was able to survive, This is the Cactus and Cradle, a formation which is already basically broken and dead. The oils on human skin are extremely disruptive to the growth of stalactites and stalagmites. As this is one of the most popular caves in the country, they let everyone touch this one to get it out of their system and hopefully not touch anything else. Although I'm not sure how frequently it's cleaned of the thousands of germs of people that touch it every week. There is the Totem Pole, a stalagmite, and the Crystal Chandelier, a stalactite grouping. Obviously a lot of work has been done on the cave trail to be compatible with tour groups as they literally blasted through solid rock here. They do have a lot of cool yet unnatural lighting throughout the cave. There's more of the path that Leo Lambert crawled through. Definitely a tight spot without any natural lighting. However, he did say after the long and dangerous journey through the cave that discovering Ruby Falls was like discovering God.
This is the onyx column. That is the Leaning Tower, a pretty awesome column formation. And you can also see a turtle in the background. That's a fish. Also, during the Depression, the tour guides would secretly chip off features, especially these stalactites in here, and sell them off to tourists for some extra money. There are laws against that now. That is the dragon's foot. There are some unnamed bacon strip formations. The bright curvy formation on the right there is referred to as the angel's wing. There's the officially recognized Ruby Falls bacon strip. There's also a potato chip. These are the tobacco leaves. This is the western sunset. Some very clever lighting here, I like this. This is the frozen Niagara. What Niagara Falls would look like frozen in a cave. This is one of my favorite formations, steak and potatoes. This one I definitely see. We're now about to see Ruby Falls. On Lambert's second trip into the cave, he took his wife, Ruby, and named it after her. The falls are part of an underground stream that is fed by rainwater and natural springs. The water then continues out of the pool below Ruby Falls through Lookout Mountain and joins the Tennessee River at the base of the mountain. It's an underground 145 foot high waterfall and it's an absolutely spectacular sight to behold.
You only get a few minutes to view it, then the guides herd the hordes from the falls and follow the cave trail back to the elevator, which was once the longest elevator ride south of the Mason-Dixon line. This is called the Hall of Dreams. And that was the Ruby Falls Cave. Definitely one of the best caves I've ever been to and the only one with a giant waterfall inside. While I was in the cave, the sun went down, so we're back up on the castle tower to view Chattanooga at night. Ruby Falls is an essential stop if you're ever in the area, so come on by and experience Ruby Falls for yourself. Please check out my other videos, and thanks for watching!